Okay, so a few friends have been talking about Dead Reckoning with um, flying simulators recently and how you might use it to navigate when you've got no VOR stations nearby. So the idea of Dead Reckoning is if you know you're travelling in a given direction for a given amount of time at a given speed, you can figure out where you've ended up, given you know a, a reference point of where you started. But it gets more complicated if you've got wind involved at a different angles in your line of travel, for example. So I thought we might do some basic maths to show how you can work things out. And you can put this maths into a spreadsheet so you can make yourself a calculator, or there's various um, mobile phone apps you can get that do this, or there's um, even a, a paper uh, navigation computer, or a plastic navigation computer, it looks a bit like a slide rule that you can do it with as well. But we're going to work it out on paper just to show the basic trigonometry maths involved in doing it. So, if you imagine you've got your aeroplane on a map, and we'll draw the axes of the map. So we've got east, or which is the x-axis, and you've got north, which is the y-axis. And we've got an aeroplane, and say we're flying at 60 degrees. So there's our little aeroplane. And we're doing 100 knots. Yeah, and this is 60 degrees from north, remember. So, knots means nautical miles per hour. So if we do all of our calculations based on one hour, it will make it nice and simple. So in one, in one hour, doing 100 knots, we will have done 100 nautical miles. So we could say this distance on our map is going to be 100 nautical miles. Does that make sense? So what we really need to work out is how much we are away from the the horizontal axis and how far we are away from the vertical axis instead of just knowing a direction and a line and this will become obvious in a moment why once we look at wind and how we can work out the differences and, and plot where we'll have ended up so to do this we need some basic school maths so if you remember we have sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine theta equals adjacent oops, over hypotenuse. And tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. I don't think we'll need tan, but we'll get there. Um, OK, so if you've never seen sine, cosine and tan before, I can quickly explain them to you. So if we imagine a circle with a stick and the one end of the stick is in the middle of the circle and the end of the stick is at the perimeter of the circle and the stick is one unit long yeah if we imagine this is at, the stick is at zero degrees and we sweep it this direction and you imagine this is on a a grid where you've got an x and a y axis so all we mean by sine and cosine is when the stick, for example, gets to this point, which would be 45 degrees, yeah? Sine is the vertical difference between the end of the stick and the axis, yeah? So at 45 degrees, it happens to be 0.7071. It's just one of those numbers you tend to remember. Cosine is the horizontal difference between the end of the stick and the and the vertical axis. Yeah, so that's 0 0.7071 again, because it's obviously 45, so both are going to be the same. Yeah, so you can see sine of 0 is going to be 0. Sine of 90 degrees will be 1, because as we come up, this is sine, remember, and this is cosine. So as it comes up to 90 degrees, sine becomes 1. And then as we come over the top to 180, sine 180 is 0 again. Sine 270 is minus 1. Sine, um, obviously, yeah, it's going to come back around again. It's back to 0 again. So you can see it does this kind of pattern, yeah, as it sweeps around the circle. So each revolution 
makes this kind of wave pattern. Cosine is the same deal basically, but it starts off at one and it does that. Yeah? Anyway, so that's all sine and cosine are. So wh why they come into play is these formulas. So if we've got a right angle triangle for the direction we're traveling, if you imagine we've got our triangle, we'll just draw it again to make it very clear what we're doing. There's our right angle triangle. There's our 60 degrees. That side is 100. Yes, 100. And we want to know what the opposite side to the angle is. Now, if we look at this formula, we know the angle, we know the hypotenuse, which leaves one unknown, so we can solve it. So sine of 60 equals opposite over 100. So if we rearrange that slightly, we can say sine 60 times 100 equals the opposite. Now we can work out sine of 60 by looking on a calculator, or if you're anything like me, you can have it that you've written down on a bit of paper. So sine of 60 is 0 0.86. So 0 0.86 times 100 equals 86. So that's that side of the triangle. So we know horizontally we have moved 86 away from where we started. What about vertically? So this is the adjacent side to the angle. So if we go and look over here, the cosine formula is leaves us one unknown, which is the adjacent. We know the hypotenuse, which is 100, and we know the angle, which is 60. So cosine 60 equals adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 100. So the only bit we don't know is the adjacent, so we can rearrange it. So we can say cosine 60 times 100 equals the adjacent. Yeah, so we just rearrange that times that is that. Okay, so if we look, if we plug cosine 60 into a calculator, we get 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 times 100 equals 50. So we've got 50. So our aeroplane has traveled from 0, 0, 0,0 on here to 86,50 on our map. Yeah? But it's more complicated than that because we're going to introduce some wind into this. So let's imagine, so if that's traveling at 60 degrees, let's imagine we've got wind going perpendicular to us. So our wind is going to be at 330 degrees to make it so it's exactly uh, 90 degrees from the, the travel so we'll get a, a big difference so we'll say 330 degrees this is the direction the wind's going remember not the direction it's coming from when you see a um, meteorological report it always lists the wind as the direction it's coming from yeah so this would be uh, 150 degrees that the wind would actually say because it's over here but this is 330 degrees so that's our angle but if you think about it in terms of a right angle triangle, just to make this simple for ourselves, we've got the wind, which starts here and ends up over here, if we imagine it's still on this diagram, yeah? And the wind is maybe 20 knots, 20 nautical miles in an hour. So in one hour, the length of that side is 20. So something being blown along would have moved 20 nautical miles. So we want to know, as again, what these sides are. So again, it's exactly the same thing. So for the horizontal component here, we want sine 30 times 20. Yeah? And I think I've got this worked out somewhere. So if we do exactly the same calculation, sine 30 times 20 comes out at minus 10. Or, yeah, the, that, the length of that is 10. So uh, if we do cosine for this one, cosine uh, 30 degrees times 20, that comes out at 17.3. So if you think about it in terms of our aeroplane, we start here, we'll draw, we'll draw our axes again. We were trying to go 
this direction for 100 nautical miles. But the wind blew us this direction by from so we ended up at, we thought we ended up at 86.5 oh sorry 80 sorry 86 comma 50 on the map but the wind blew us left 10 so we got 76.5 and it blew us up 17.3 So I'm just working this out, uh, 67.3. Yeah. So if you imagine, we st we were actually thought we were going there, but the wind was blowing us the whole time. So we've actually ended up over there. Does that make sense? So this was 60 degrees. And we can actually work out what angle we've ended up traveling. And this is where Tan comes in. So tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. If you think in terms of this triangle, that's 76.5 along there. And that's 67.3 on that side. Yeah. So we want to know what the tangent would be so we can we can work it out I'm, I'm going to save you the maths of doing all we're going to do is divide them by each other so we, we would end up with the opposite divided by the adjacent would come out at 1.1378 and if if we then plug that into a calculator we can turn the the tangent number back into the angle you do inverse tan or um, arc tan same thing or tan to the minus one it's sometimes marked as and that will come out with 48.7 degrees yeah so we actually ended up going 48.7 degrees not 60 degrees yeah so the the night the the neat thing here is you can actually figure out the difference between these two which is 11.3. So all you need to do then is change your course to add 11.3 onto your course to counter the wind. And it's not a perfect way of doing it, but it's a pretty good way of doing it. So if we add 11.3 onto 60, we get 71.3. So if we flew at 71.3 degrees, we would counter the wind. We would still need to work out how far we've gone and again, you can use um, trigonometry to do that. But it's uh, quite a nice way of doing it, isn't it? So, yeah, I've written a, a spreadsheet to do this really quickly so you don't have to work it all out by hand. Um, but, yeah, so that's dead reckoning. And it's kind of... You, you imagine trying to do this in a moving aeroplane would be a bit of a nightmare. You'd need a couple of minutes to work it out and you'd have to keep doing it. So you, these sorts of things tend to be pre-calculated on things they called flight computers. And it's actually like a slide draw with a you know a printed slider and a an angle measurer, or you can mark it on a map and just measure it with a um, a ruler. But yeah, I'll put a link to the spreadsheet that I've done these calculations in in the notes, and you can have a look at it yourself. Okay, any comments? Put them in the the comments box underneath the video.